Hi guys, it's Alex here. Hope you're all well. Today we're gonna talk about Netflix, Roku. Let's dive right in. Netflix stock is up 4.6% today at a price of $178. Year to date is down 70%. From top to bottom, Netflix is down 74%. It has a very good P ratio, 16. Now so let's take a look at Roku. Roku is $91 today. It's up 2.3% today. Year to date is down 61% almost. From top to bottom is down 80%. It has a P ratio of 93. It's very expensive. If you don't know already, Netflix is looking to buy Roku. Roku reached a partnership deal with Walmart. Under the deal, Walmart will sell products to Roku users through ads that enable them to buy the retailer's products using their TVs. That's kind of cool buying products with your TV remote, yeah? With Roku e-commerce as the operating systems user will be able to buy Walmart's product directly from their TVs and then Walmart will send the products straight to customers, to consumers' houses. By working with Roku, we are the first to market retailer to bring customers a new shoppable experience and seamless checkout on the largest screen in their homes, their TV. Here's what it really means if Netflix tries to buy Roku. Consumers are switching services frequently and will likely drop more of them in the coming year. Netflix is forced to spend heavily on content but might be hitting the ceiling on what it can charge given customer behavior. This makes distribution potentially more valuable than content, which is why Roku is a rumored acquisition target. Here's what's happening in CTV. Something monumental recently happened in CTV space. According to Roku's first quarter letter to shareholders, 65% of adults age 18 to 49 in the US were streaming video content in March compared to just 63% in the age group watching traditional pay TV like cable and DVRs. For the first time, there were more streamers than non-streamers. According to a recent report by Market Research Park Associates, 32 million households in the US can be described as service hoppers. They switch services frequently and resubscribe to services they had previously dropped. This suggests there was already a limit to how much consumers would pay for streaming in aggregate. And now, discretionary income is getting squeezed further by inflation. That's true. The average consumer is spending about $180 more per month on gasoline alone this year compared to this time last year, according to Yardeni Research. Therefore, consumers must cut spending somewhere. And perhaps it's the money going to paid streaming services. The challenge for Netflix. Netflix started the streaming revolution and shareholders enjoy life-changing returns while it was the only show in town. But with more competition, it's harder to attract subscribers. And in the most recent quarter, Netflix lost subscribers for the first time in over a decade. You need more compelling content than the other guy if you want to gain and retain subscribers. But generating quality content comes at a price. The company already spends billions annually on original films, films and series. And the 80 800 pound gorilla in the space, Netflix has more to spend than most competitors, but it might have to spend even more to stay on top. Spending more strains the bottom line. That's okay if a company can simultaneously raise prices. But it's fair to question how much pricing power Netflix has left to preserve margins. It can be overlooked that the company announces announced price increases in January shortly before the, a small decline in subscribers. For service hoppers, maybe it was time to jump Netflix ship. 
This is what happens when something gets commoditized. Pricing power decreases and profits ultimately erode. This is the challenge Netflix is now facing. To reiterate, the shift to CTV is real and still happening, but is getting harder to profit from the shift with paid services. Netflix recognizes this, which explains why it suddenly announced plans to explore an ad-supported tier for its service. While discussing financial results for the first quarter of 2022, management said it was looking to add an advertising tier within the next year or two, despite previous opposition to the idea. Having an ad-supported tier will help it retain more subscribers and monetize the original content it's already spent billions of dollars to produce. After all, Netflix subscribers, who are service hoppers, are more likely to jump down to the cheaper version than cancel entirely. But this model still requires Netflix to acquire subscribers in the first place. By contrast, Roku is able to profit from the growth of CTV by better monetizing the distribution of content rather than the content itself. There are over 61 million active Roku accounts streaming from a variety of services and Roku is able to profit at least a bit from all of it rather than being reliant on original content. If Netflix is seriously considering acquiring Roku, it's because distribution can be more valuable than content, which is why I love my Roku stock. Roku's market capitalization is about $11 billion as of this writing, whereas Netflix has $6 billion in cash alone, suggesting a deal is more than feasible. I think it would be a great move for Netflix shareholders. This has got me thinking about Netflix service. Bear with me. So, you are watching a movie TV show you like on Netflix. Let's say you are watching Stranger Things. Everyone connects to a certain degree with the actors of, the mo of a movie they like. Maybe you like how they talk, what clothes they wear, what car they drive, what products they use their story in the movie. If you connect with them at this level, with the actors I mean, in my opinion you are more likely to want all of these things for yourself. And here I personally see an opportunity for Netflix. When you finish watching an episode of Stranger Things, Netflix can show you what you can do next. Watch the next episode or buy products related to the TV show. If you think this is coming too strong on the viewer, Netflix can just add the link to the store in the description screen of the movie. I did a little sketch of this, as you can see here, on the movie details screen. Here Netflix can add a couple of popular items from their merch store and they can add a more merch button that sends you to all of the products for this movie. Netflix also could sell you traveling tickets to places where the movie was filmed. For me, I want to have physical things from the show and experience them for myself, as if I were inside the movie. I believe it's fun. Or is it just me? Other revenue streams for Netflix. Netflix can copy Disney and build a Netflix park, where they can have different activities for each popular movie TV show on their streaming service. For example, they can have a Squid Game themed roller coaster. Someone on YouTube just did an example of this. I don't know why, but I found this on YouTube. It's crazy.
Another idea is to have a user-generated content part on Netflix. Netflix can invite popular YouTube influencers to post content and make money on Netflix also. This ties very good with Netflix plans to have a free subscription service where they can show ads. These ads bring revenue to Netflix and Netflix can share the, this revenue with the influencers. I think YouTube is too big to not have competition. Netflix can be that second video platform for influencers. Cathy Wood from ARK Invest is still buying Roku almost every week. So she sees the potential in Roku as well. I did make a video where I talked about Roku and Netflix. You can check it out. Click the card in the corner above. Roku is the third largest position in all of Cathy Wood's ARK Invest ETFs. You can see her trades here. She's buying in April, in May and June. She's buying Roku all the time. What do you think of all of this? I'd like to know your opinion. Leave a comment below. If you like this video, please smash that like button and subscribe. See you next time.